From an unusual show tomorrow night, three of my guests are generals. Uh, one of them is not, Alice Platon, a uh, funny little girl who was on the show a couple weeks back, uh, or last week, I think. Um, one of them is General Gavin, who was played, we were trained beside In the Longest Day by Robert Ryan. Bob Ryan in The Longest Day, right. very well, too. Uh, we also have Brigadier General Hoisington and Brigadier General Hayes. Um, those last two that I mentioned are, are women. Ladies, aren't they? yeah. They're women, yeah. yes. General Elizabeth Hoisington and General Anna May Hayes. So that should be interesting. Uh, how many generals have you played, sir? Hmm. Jackson. Strange question. Uh, Gordon. Uh, that character. Do commanders in, in chief count? I've played three presidents. <laughs> I, I would think they would. Have you ever just played a slob? <laughs> Uh, the Frank, guy I uh, played in Will Penny, you'd, uh, you'd have to call kind of a sloppy oh, yeah, guy. He was illiterate, right. you know. Yes, I, I think you would suddenly get the urge to play a role where you were allowed to drool and a lot of things that you just never, yeah. never <laughs> well, do. Well, that's one it. of the things that appealed to me about uh, Will Penny, yeah. which uh, I liked enormously. It was, uh, went uh, generally unrecognized as a film, but, uh, you know, I liked it. Whoever got a part that you wanted? Oh, boy, lots and lots <laughs> of people. <laughs> Was yeah. there one that was a heartbreaker for you? Every part you lose is a heartbreaker. Uh, mm. The, uh, well, I remember very early in my career and obviously long before they adjusted the aim of the film in the direction it should have gone, uh, I, Stanley Kramer offered me High Noon when they had it. And before somebody pointed out it should be an older guy and, sh and should obviously be Gary Cooper. Mm -hmm. and uh, which is one of the reasons it became a great film. But uh, I must say that's one of the castings I agree with, though. <laughs> You're glad it turned out that way? Absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything you won't do on screen if you ever refused to do a scene? Oh, sure. You mean, uh, there's a lot of times you disagree uh, with the concept of a scene, the writing, the directing. I, I, my rule of thumb on it is uh, the director is supposed to be the captain and mm -hmm. I always say at the beginning I have a loud voice and argue a lot but if you ever get tired of arguing why well, just say look do it this way because I want you to do it this way and I think the actor is supposed to do it then there are uh, you know Dennis Hopper and a couple of guys would disagree with me but I think that's the way you're supposed to play it but isn't that admitting an ahead that you will uh, finally give in? Sure. Yeah. I think you have to. Yeah. Uh, you can't. Because the director has to make the picture finally, is that it? Of course. Yeah. Uh, film is the director's medium. Uh, on the stage, finally the curtain goes up and the director goes across the street to Sardis and gets smashed. Mm -hmm. And, it <laughs> and belongs, later by the critics. <laughs> and it belongs to the actor. It's actor's yeah. country. But film, uh, which is something writers often don't understand either. Film is not an actor's medium, it's not a writer's medium, it is a director's medium. The film only exists in the director's mind, really. Even when you shot it, you can finish the whole picture. People say, well, how did it turn out? You say, I have no idea, you know. I, mm -hmm. half the time, I'm involved in the pictures I make from the very beginning, perhaps the first person involved. And I've seen the various versions of the script um, involved in the casting and, you know, the design and all that stuff. And even so, I see the dailies and the rough cuts of the scene. But the director and the editor and the producer are mainly the director and the editor are putting the picture together. And until that happens, the picture doesn't exist. What you've shot has only the most remote relationship to, to the finished film. You see a rough cut of a scene and you say, yeah, that's... Uh, that's what we did. It looks like it's in there. Mm -hmm. you, you, this is something you come to realize uh, painfully over the years, I think, that uh, your performance, all, all you can be sure of, the, the notes you make for yourself after a scene, after looking at it the next day, the best you can ever say is it looks like it's in there. Now, whether it will cut together into the director's concept and whether the, the director's concept is going to work is something you can't tell, but you certainly can't second guess him on the set. So when you go to see the film, it can be a big surprise to you. Oh, it can just be often. a whole different mood, a whole different... Often. Very much, yeah. That's the clearest I've ever heard anyone explain that. I, I know uh, if you've ever sat and Gee, watched somebody I wish somebody I remembered what film, I said. I... <laughs> we'll get a transcript of this. <laughs>
but uh, have you ever seen a guy edit film and change scenes and put music in oh, and change? And actually, and I miracle. have no desire to direct because it's uh, that's it's rare. A whole, it is well, people automatically imagine that uh, that actors want to direct. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I've directed on the stage; it's a, a big nothing for me. But the closest, you know, the the things that interest me in film, other than acting are things that I can have some hand in anyway as it happens. Casting, the shape of a script, things like yeah. that. And the only other part of it that would attract me at all is the editing. I made a, a picture with Orson Welles once, and I yeah. spent a picture called oh, Touch, Touch, of of Touch of Evil. Oh, of course. Yeah. Uh, and Welles is probably the most talented single guy I've ever worked for mm -hmm. in terms of just that single element of talent. There are, that's not the only thing. It's, you know, like, like saying a, a pitcher has great control, but that may not be all, you know. It's, he still may not be a great pitcher. Uh, but that one thing, Wells had so much. He's, and I remember sitting, I spent a couple of weeks after the picture was finished, sitting in the cutting room watching him. And it, you know, it's like a guy putting a watch together. And he'd sit there with these big cigars, dropping ashes all over the film and taking sometimes the moving of three frames of film from here to there. Can I promise you, make more of a contribution to the scene mm -hmm. than what the actor did uh, with the whole scene? That's so film is that kind of exciting a to me, that you know, talent, to be able to take strips of film. It's almost like these guys who can keep several chess games in their sure, head at once. Exactly. How can you know it's that and kind of how a it's going to look by removing a That's few exactly, frames? It's more like chess than anything yeah. else. Yeah.